Hi, so when starting with Teamwood, for project management, the very first and important step is to understand what kind of options you have to structure your project data. And since Teamwood is a very flexible system, there are at least few ways to do it. Now, what you're looking here at is a list of my workspaces. And companies use workspaces to separate groups of people or project portfolios, because each workspace can offer different access levels to different team members, meaning some people will not see what other people see as their work data. A good example could be sales and marketing working in one workspace and project engineering and technician group working in another because they don't overlap in their work too often and they can be quite nicely separated. Another case could be if you have a lot of projects, meaning a very large project portfolio. So then we offer to create separate portfolios or workspaces for specific project groups. And then projects can be grouped by project type or the period when they are being active, like years. Now, each workspace has more details, how you can structure data inside of it. So let's dive in. Now, when I open my workspace, I get presented with a list of boards on the left side menu. In this case, my company called Eastwind Incorporated has three boards, one called Template, Small Projects, and the last one called Project Mars. Now, in this case, each board is like a separate project for me. And this is what we usually recommend because a regular sized project, which takes from six to 24 months, it involves up to 20 people, fits very nicely into a single board. And this board is just like a folder where you put all your data, in this case, tasks, project tasks. Now, what we also see inside the board on the right, it's my gun chart, which has a project schedule. And on the left is my work breakdown structure, where I have four folders or subfolders. We, we just call them rows. So it's up to you how you name it. It could be work packages, stages, or project phases. Now I have four of them called procurement, logistics, assembly, and quality assurance. And each row now has dedicated tasks. So once I'm finished with all the tasks, I can instantly collapse the project stage and work on the ones which are active. This, this gives me flexibility of what I want to see and also, since I call this board intentionally a template, I can reuse, I can standardize a project inside of my company. And once I need to start a new one, I just simply clone this board. And if it needs to be specific, I can remove one of those stages or more of them. So this gives me a building blocks of each project. Now, if I'm working on smaller projects, um, let's say you have from 50 to 100 projects happening every quarter or every half a year, then I would recommend going into each project as a standalone work item or a task. Because in Teamhood, you can create quite a deep nested hierarchy, subtasks, subtasks of subtasks, and so on. So you will be able to map out your project still with this structure. And it's better that way because in this example, I have a better structure which can be fit for numerous projects in one board. I have two project types, one for a wind farm and the other one for solar panel arrays. And I also have a folder called templates where I keep my templates for each project. And once I'm ready to start a new project, I just clone it, move it to my quarter. I, as you see, I have first and second quarters uh, for my capacity planning. And if I decide to schedule my project in second quarter, I will place it here. And what I need to do is just schedule it, set the start date, and all my work uh, related to that project will be planned for me. So this is a good structure for smaller projects. Now, if I'm working on bigger ones, the regular size projects, I still use boards, just as I've showed you before. And cloning boards is the easiest way to reuse project data, so you don't need to create it every time from scratch. And the last important part to mention is why it is beneficial to create projects in one workspace. Because each workspace has 
these so-called workspace views, which aggregate data from all the boards. In our case, again, each board is a project. It means that all projects data will be aggregated in my workspace views. And there are quite a few views. I will tell about those views in other videos, but just an example could be, I want to see the workload across my team, across all the projects. So this view helps me to overview capacity, plan for it, and align if required. And as you see, tasks are coming from all the different boards. And this way, I can even have a hybrid portfolio. I can have large projects living alongside small projects. And I can have both worlds in a single workspace. Small customer orders, small projects. Let's do a dedicated board for all of them. If I have big projects, I can do boards for each one of them as well, and then aggregate data in my workspace views. So I hope this gets you an understanding. What are your options? And if you're going to work on a very large project would take at least a few years and involve from 50 to hundreds of people, I would recommend taking one workspace per project because that's actually a project program probably which you're running already. And then inside that project program, you will still use boards as either the grand project phases or just projects in that program. So that's it. This is what I wanted to show you today and follow us for more videos in our YouTube channel or social networks. Good luck.